ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the desert well what do you think about the first performance eh what do you think guys i mean very good honestly very good work uh she had me guys but when she started to hyperventilate at the end i lost it very good <laughs> performance but guys take a look at this right even her profile picture is her just crying <laughs> <laughs> well uh, let's move on now guys to one of the channel favorites uh, and when i say favorites i mean you guys don't want to see this woman uh, in your nightmares but hey uh, we have her again she's back at it again guys uh, single-handedly destroying multiple young women's lives by giving the worst advice you can give <laughs> so let's take a listen here Ladies, it is totally okay before you go out on a first date with a man to ask him for his full name and his address or phone number. Obviously, we use that information to do a background check or to check social media and see if they're married. But if a man won't give that to you, then cut him loose and walk away. Of the men that I have met in my life, the truly masculine, strong, kind, wonderful men that I know, their goal is to make the women around them feel safe. All right, so you lady want to know all the men's backgrounds and for them to give you the personal ID card, social security numbers and all that so you do your little checks. All right, fair enough. But if men were to do this, right? Because men, if we, if we could ask one question and receive an honest answer, we wouldn't ask for your personal details and all that. We would rather ask what's your body count, you know? Sadly, there is no document for that. I wish there was, you know, like a record history of who you're sleeping with. Uh, so we can check these women and understand in a matter of seconds if they are dating material or not. But the moment you guys go and ask these women on a first date or something how many people you've been with, then you are insecure, then you are controlling, right? They use these words, uh, of course, because they're hiding the fact that they are 304s. Guys, if there was nothing shameful about having a big body count, why don't these women say so? You're not ashamed that you've had your experiences why not say so? What do you care if the other person views it as, as something bad, you know? No, but they always hide it because they inherently know that it's bad. So, uh, I don't know, I find it a bit hypocritical that you women want us to give, like, uh, personal information so you do your little checks, but at the same time you're dishonest about your past. And if the man you're meeting does not care whether or not you feel safe or not, then he does not deserve any more of your time. Already a huge red flag, walk away. Now if they come back and say, oh my God, that's so crazy. You have so much baggage and so much pain and we don't want to be with a woman like you anyway. Great, glad we got that resolved. Because you're right. Most of us do have baggage. Most mm. of us have been hurt and we are all trying to heal the best we can. There is no way in hell you're going to go out on a date with a woman or a man in their 40s or 50s who has not been hurt by a relationship, who does not have trust issues. And since when did being cautious become a bad thing? That's called wisdom. So this is a great vetting process. Before the first date, ask their first and last name and their phone number or their address and see how they respond. If they care... Guys, I'm giving no woman my address. You know, then they go and they scratch your car. Or they cut your tires, you know? <laughs> I'm not giving these psychos my address. What, you think for a man it's safe to give his personal address with the amount of insane women that they are? Get out of here, man. ...and want you to be safe, then that's a good guy to go out on a date with. If he gets upset that you want to know his name and phone number, that you don't want to go to a bar and drink alcohol, that you don't want to go on a weekend trip for the first time getting together, that you don't want to go to his place for the first date then you cut those MFers loose because we are choosing better. We are being wiser. And I'm proud of you all for doing the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very proud. Well, guys, let me go back to something she said, which was um, that I think it was here. Let me try and play it. Uh, yeah, that everyone has been hurt. You know, I'm in my 40s. I'm in my 50s. I've gone through my experiences. I've gone through my trauma. I'm trying to heal from it. It's somehow, guys, somehow, it's both empowering and, like, wise to go through these mistakes because they help me learn. But at the same time, they always need to heal from it. Have you noticed that? Why do you need to heal from a quote-unquote good experience that you are proud of? Because these women, they wear it as a badge of honor. They say, oh, I'm proud of my mistakes because they have helped me grow. 
And no, in reality, they have torn them down. And these women are broken individuals, guys. Uh, we're trying to heal the best I can. Good luck with that. We men uh, don't want to touch that. We don't want your trauma, your chaos uh, stepping into our lives. So, gentlemen, now let's move on to another uh, video. And this one is of an ugly woman. Uh, as she herself says so, all right? I'm not judging. But let's hear her out. I'm not the girl that guys find attractive. I've never had a boyfriend. I've never had a guy ask me on a date. I've shown interest in men for them to just, you know, blow me off or be mean about it. I have never felt beautiful or like wanted by someone. And I think it really does make you feel a certain way about yourself. Now that I'm on this like weight loss journey and I've lost 74 pounds, I'm starting to open myself up to hoping for more, hoping that maybe things will change, but also really afraid that what if it wasn't my size all along? What if I'm just not worthy of pursuit? What if I'm just not? the person who gets to have a family and that's okay there's so many people who live wonderful and full lives without being married and children and having children and I know that I'll be okay if I don't have that I just always dreamed of it and people people want to like tell you that it's not your size it's just the type of guys you're going for well no I really do think that it was my size and that's why i've been alone well the tiktok ends right here guys let me know what you think now yes I mean, you have to be honest i'm not trying to be mean or anything this woman is not attractive but guys if you ask me if she loses all the weight to a you know to the average to not the average the normal she is going to be pretty <laughs> you know you know what i mean like what would you give her now i'll give her a three for example guys if she loses weight you can easily become a 6, even a 7 with makeup and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Easily, guys. Like, when I say that women always have options, it really is always. Just don't be massively overweight. And if while being um, a normal size, you are not one of the most hideous creatures on planet Earth, you are going to have options. But I also wanted to show you this TikTok. And no bad feelings. This woman seems like a very kind person. But that's what I wanted to ask you. If this woman, I rated her a 3 out of 10, if she was an 8 out of 10, do you think that she would have the same personality? Hell no. <laughs> she says, I really want a family, I really want kids. Do you think um, that if she was an 8 out of 10, she would want that? My guess is no. Which is, sadly, what happens when women have options. When women are attractive... They don't focus on the important things in life. They are not humble. They are not pure. They are not honest, you know. And they capitalize on their power of being attractive. Because being attractive grants you a lot of power in, in our societies, you know. So th this woman, guys, is automatically good just because she's not... Or I should frame it the other way around. Because... Uh, if she was attractive, she automatically would lose the good qualities that she has right now. You know? And it's so hard, guys, to find a woman that is both very attractive and humble. <laughs> it's, it's so rare. You've probably seen people like those uh, so few times that you can count them uh, with fingers on one hand. You know what I mean? And today, not only are women um, capitalizing on the fact that they're attractive... They're also capitalizing on dating apps and how the internet works, meaning that they don't even need to be that attractive, you know? Like, there's so many 5 out of 10s that are not very attractive, but they have the internet, so they still increase their standards to a delusional point. They still uh, capitalize on the access that they have. So I really wanted to show this because it really emphasizes how much a person's personality changes based on their looks, you know? And ask for me guys i'd rather have a 6 out of 10 that is a good person than a literal 10 out of 10 that is a pain in the back 
Absolutely, guys. If I am able to wake up next to a woman and not get a jump scare each time I look at her, I will take that any day of the week rather than the most attractive female on earth, but who happens to be entitled and is not humble and is annoying. Oh, it's not even close. But gentlemen, what would you choose? And now, before we move to our article stories, I wanted to talk a bit about this news right here. So, Deadpool Killer is the assigned name to this uh, unaliver. He has unalived two women. Has reportedly received over a hundred explicit photos from female fans while in prison. <laughs> women. <laughs> Am I right, guys? Women. Now, they, they go for the bad boys, all right? Not always on, on the livers, yeah? But there was this other story that also got famous of a dude. It was like some news report of a dude that... Uh, I think he on a live, he was a serial on a live. And you had female comments below saying, Oh, he's so attractive. I'm sorry he's going to jail. Stuff like that. Like, women simping, guys. <laughs> oh, no, I, I actually recall now. I think it was a school shooter or maybe just a shooter that unalived a bunch of people. Something like, like that, guys. Like, something crazy. And you had these women down below in the comments simping. Oh, he's so attractive. <laughs> Very cringe. But yeah, these uh, women like bad boys, right? Not necessarily unalivers, for the most part, to my knowledge. Uh, but they just like men who are aggressive. And also attractive. Attractiveness is the first thing, all right? But then who are aggressive, who are dominant. You know, no matter how much they say that they like the soft-spoken, you know, uh, very kind-hearted individual. I mean, it's positives. They may also like that, but they won't like just that if it misses dominance and aggression. Not the kind of aggression where uh, you kick a little girl riding her bicycle, but a sort of aggression that you, you can protect, you know? You're ready to fight, you're ready to cut your losses and jump at five people if necessary. That's what, what they like. And this sort of guy who goes to prison because he did some bad things, uh, some reckless behavior, guys, they love it. No need to change my mind on it. But now, guys, let's move on to our article stories. Let me know what you think about this. And now, the first title says, He never told me he was poorly. I've been in a situation with a guy where we became integral parts uh, of each other's days. Seven months of constant communication. We both knew we liked each other, but neither of us made a move. Today, he told me he's polyamorous. Surprise! With, uh, which shocked me, because after all this time, why didn't he mention it sooner? Why didn't you take the, relation, the, the talking situation somewhere sooner, is my question. Seven months, guys. I accepted it, but was hurt finding out that he was involved with another girl just last week. And this had been going on for a while. A part of me feels hurt and betrayed. I wouldn't have minded if his actions came after he told me, but this happened before I even knew he was polyamorous. Well, that's the problem, that you wouldn't have minded if this happened at a later point. Which just begs the question, why do you mind that it has happened already? You know? Guys, if you ask me about polyamory, I think it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting, makes me want to vomit, it's immoral. I hate it, and I can uh, give arguments any day of the week. And I will hate it both before and after I find out if I'm in this situation. But these people, they don't like polyamory, right? Which is the reason why she feels bad finding out that this man did some things that she considers immoral. You know, being with someone and still sleeping with other people. She considers that as cheating, which it is. Uh, but she cannot say it, right? Because... Nowadays, everything is so woke and so uh, accepting of everyone, right? So she hates it, her body hates it, and her brain understands that what he did was the equivalent of cheating. But she, she cannot bring herself to admit it, right? She has to act all accepting towards polyamory. Very stupid. Am I, just, uh, am I justified in being upset? She has to come to the internet to ask... 
my justified in feeling cheated on if a person that was supposed to be uh you know only with me is sleeping with other people you has to ask the question you see how people today guys they are like npcs they are they have no opinions their body feels bad because they still live in reality uh, but their brains cannot cannot keep that standard of honesty because they are brainwashed a big part of me hurts because the issue isn't who he is but how he treated me in this situation how did he treat you he didn't cheat on you he's just polyamorous i don't know if i want this or if he even sees a problem with his actions again what is the problem with his actions if you ask him he's gonna tell you that there, there is no problem hey i'm polyamorous it's just the way i am right according to him it's not cheating so that automatically makes it real, I guess. So he didn't cheat on you. What's the problem? <laughs> so funny, guys. Uh, but talking about polyamory, gentlemen. Uh, in October, I'll be taking a vacation to a country I used to live in the past. And I will meet up with a polyamorous bisexual feminist. <laughs> now, I hear you. Why is the question? Why he done? Why would you inflict that upon yourself? Well, first off, because we were acquaintances back in the day, so, you know, for, for all time's sake. Second off, because I love me a good debate, you know, a debate, excuse me. I'll just go there, I'll show her how big of a patriarchal pig I am, and we'll see how she reacts, gentlemen. Hey, maybe I can bring her back to normality. Maybe I can speak some sense into her misguided brain. Uh, or maybe she'll call the police on me. I don't know, we'll find out, guys, but uh, wish me luck. <laughs> but now let's move on to another short article it says i think i just received the text every guy dreams of we're gonna end on a good note all right f polyamory f all that nonsense let's end on a good note she accepted me as batman did i win at life or unlock an achievement so i've been talking to this girl from hinge and things have gone uh, have been going great but today today was the day i realized i've hit the jackpot he hit me with the most insanely perfect text. My text. So the guy says, Good night, got to go. This city needs me. Referencing Batman. Her text. Ah, good luck, Batman. Was about to try my Catwoman suit. I am giddy like a six-year-old having candy. Yes, how do I respond to her? Was thinking of explaining to her how perfect her text is. Well, there you go, ladies. Now that's all you need. Just call him Batman. <laughs> And he'll be so happy. He'll go to the internet to tell everybody about it. You know, then, then guys, women say that we are complex creatures. What do men want? Oh, they have so much standards. Meanwhile, you call us Batman and, and we're literally buying the ring already. You know, no, but jokes aside, men really don't ask for a lot. <laughs> Is the main point here. And it really takes so little to make a man fall in love with you totally and unconditionally and be willing to sacrifice himself for you it really doesn't take a lot if you ask me gentlemen so there's no excuse for the ladies out there but gentlemen what do you think about our episode today let me know down in the comments thank you for making ampus day better and i'll see you all guys in the next one have a good one